Welcome back. So we're talking about the singular value decomposition x equals u sigma v transpose. And now we're going to talk about how you can use this to compute uh, the principal component analysis, the PCA, which is one of the most important uh, techniques in dimensionality reduction in all of statistics and data analysis. It's been around for over 100 years, and I'm going to walk you through just a little bit of the basics of how to use the SVD to compute PCA for a couple of data examples. So you could teach a whole course on PCA. I mean, there's over 100 years of, of papers and books written on this. I'm just going to scratch the very tip of the surface of this in this lecture. Okay. So a couple of data sets, I'm going to, I'm going to work with two data sets. One of them is going to be a manufacturer data set where I have some random variation in my data. Uh, and then the other one is going to be a real life data set uh, with genetic markers that correlate to ovarian cancer. Okay, so in this first example, this is just kind of a cooked up um, example. This is uh, all the code is at databookuw.com. Uh, I believe this is all from section 1.5 of our book, Data Driven Science and Engineering. So uh, just walking you through this very briefly, this is again, anytime you're going to test a mathematical tool like the SVD or PCA, it's a good idea for you to, to test it out on a system where you know the answer. So here I'm going to cook up toy data where I know exactly what the variance is and statistics of that data is, and I'm going to verify that PCA, if you just handed the data to someone, you could use PCA to mine uh, that data for, for those features. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cook up a data set that has a center. So my data is going to be centered at the point. It's a two-dimensional data set. There's two variables, x1 and x2. The centers of those will be 2 and 1. The sigma, the standard deviation of the first direction, will be 2. And the standard deviation of the second direction will be 0.5. So it'll have kind of four times more variance in one direction than, uh, than the other direction. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this cloud by an angle of pi over 3. Okay, I'm going to have 10,000 points in my cloud, and I'm going to generate all of this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to build a big random, uh, normally distributed random cloud of Gaussians, kind of this big Gaussian cloud in x1 and x2. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to stretch it according to sigma. I'm going to rotate it according to r, and I'm going to center it, move it centered according to xc. So I think that's actually uh, what I'm doing here. Okay, and then I'm going to plot that cloud of noisy data for you uh, in the first panel. Then what we're going to do is we're going to act like we didn't know that what the rotation and the sigma and the x-centered was, and we're going to see if we can learn that from the singular value decomposition, uh, if we can learn kind of the principal components, the principal axes of variance of this data set just from the measurements of x1 and x2. And that's what we're going to plot in, uh, in subplot 1, 2, 2. So I'm actually going to bring the whole, uh, the whole plot up all at once to start with, and then I'm going to talk you through this. Okay, so this is my, uh, my data set here that we generated um, in MATLAB. And so again, it's a kind of a Gaussian, a normally distributed cloud of points, where what I've done is I have moved the center up to 2, 1. So you can see here that the center is not at the origin. It is elongated in one direction more than the other by a factor of 4 and it's rotated up at an angle of pi over 3. So this is the data I generated. And what we're going to show is that when we do the principal components, when we subtract the mean uh, and we normalize the variance and we compute the SVD, then the principal components, these u's and sigmas, will tell me exactly what are the kind of magnitudes of variance in these principal directions and what are their angles with respect uh, to x1 and x2. Okay. So let's actually, let's actually do that. Uh, let's see if I can make this a touch smaller. Okay, good. Um, okay, so all we've done up until line 16 is just generate and plot the data. That's the first left subplot. And now everything after line 18 is computing the principal component analysis based on the SVD. Okay, so remember the first thing we do is we compute the mean uh, vector, the mean of all of this data, the mean x1 and x2 position. And that should be very, very close to the actual x center 2, 1 vector that we added to the data to offset it. Okay, so that's uh, x average. We're going to subtract off that x average from every row of our matrix. I do that by creating this x average times 1's uh, matrix. Uh, where every every row is, is x average. Uh, 
And then I'm going to subtract that off of my data matrix X to get this uh, mean centered matrix B. So all I'm doing is I'm taking this data and I'm shifting it so that it centers at the origin. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to compute the SVD of this B matrix, and we're going to normalize it by the number of data points. Okay, so essentially what we're doing uh, is just dividing by the square root of the number of measurements. Remember, we had 10,000 measurements here, so I'm going to divide by root 10,000 or divide by 100. So that essentially I'm normalizing so that as I add more and more data points, my SVD doesn't change. Okay, so I'm going to compute this SVD, and now I have my factors U, sigma and v from uh, from the SVD. And we're going to interpret the u columns and the sigma matrix in terms of how this data is rotated. What are the what are the angles or kind of the, the vector directions of these principal axes of variance in the data and how much variance is in each of those directions. OK, uh, and I'm going to do I think you should take some time and actually walk through this code carefully yourself because um, there's a little bit of nuance here. What I'm doing here is I'm taking this theta um, vector, which is basically just a vector from 0 to 2 pi in a small increment, in 100 increments. And I'm going to take that circle. And what I'm going to do to that circle is I'm going to multiply it by sigma. I'm going to stretch it out. And I'm going to rotate it by u. So remember, my data had. Um, my data was stretched by a factor of 4 in one direction, or 2 in one direction, and 0.5 in another direction. So my sigma matrix should capture that 2.5 stretching of those principal axes. And I rotated my data up by pi over 3. That should be captured in this unitary rotation matrix um, U. This should be a rotation by pi over 3. Okay, And so if I take kind of a Gaussian cloud of points, or a circle, if you will, and I multiply it by this sigma matrix to stretch it into an ellipsoid, and then I multiply it by this U matrix to rotate it up, that's how I'm color coding, uh, how I'm getting these cyan um, ellipsoids that I'm plotting here uh, on top of my data distribution. So the, and, and you can interpret this very physically. If I just take U times sigma times a unit circle, that is the ellipsoid that should capture exactly one standard deviation of my data. So you can see here uh, this inner cyan circle here. That's the one standard deviation circle. One standard deviation uh, of my data is within that ellipsoid. Okay, it's one, one standard deviation confidence interval. And so what I'm doing here is I'm plotting my, uh, I'm offsetting by my average, and then I'm adding kind of these um, standard deviations circles, one standard deviation, two standard deviation, three standard deviation, uh, not circles, ellipsoids. Okay, And you can actually see that it very, very nicely captures these 10,000 data points. I get almost, almost all of them within uh, these confidence intervals, and they're aligned with the directions of maximal variance within the data. Okay, So that's super important. So these columns U, I'm also actually plotting those directions as these red lines. So the first column of U is the first red line, is the direction of the maximum variance of the data corresponding to this factor 2. So most of the variance in the data is in that direction, that first red line, the first column of U. The second column of U tells me what the second direction of maximal variance is that captures all of the remaining variance, um, this 0.5. So really, really useful tool, um, and it has this incredibly nice interpretation in terms of uh, the statistics of the data. Okay, So this has been used for over 100 years. It's a very, very powerful technique. But we can also apply it to real-world data sets. Um, in fact, that's why it's useful. I can apply it not just to 2D scatter plots of truly Gaussian data. I can plot it. Uh, I can use it to analyze really, really, really high-dimensional data with maybe hundreds or thousands uh, of pieces of information and maybe millions uh, of, of independent experiments or measurements of those factors. So here we're going to look at this data set. Uh, the ovarian cancer data set. This is uh, built into MATLAB, so you can load ovarian cancer, and you'll get this really nice data set. I'm just going to load everything here. Um, and we're going to see. So what we have, uh, I don't know if you can see in the upper right, we have groups and observations. And so observations is a 216. Let me just do size of OBS. 
We have a 216 by 4,000 matrix. And what this corresponds to, there are 216 patients. And for each of those patients, they measure 4,000 genetic markers. Okay, and what we're trying to do is figure out which genetic markers most correlate to whether or not those uh, 216 individuals do or do not have ovarian cancer. And so this is actually a label data set. Uh, in this, in this uh, variable group, GRP, which is a 216 by one cell, so if I do size of group, it's a 216 by one cell, and this has information for each of the patients about whether or not they have cancer or are normal, okay? So again, size of my OBS. So for each of those 216 patients, we have a label. Half of them have cancer, half of them do not. And for each of those patients, we have 4,000 genetic markers. So what we're gonna try to do is figure out, are there uh, patterns in those 4,000 genetic markers that are highly correlated with ovarian cancer. And this is where it gets interesting, because for a human, you can't plot in a 4,000 dimensional feature space. I can't visualize all of these features to see if there's an ovarian cancer cluster and a non-cancer cluster. And that's why we're gonna use principal components. So what we're gonna do is essentially take the SVD of our observation matrix. We're gonna take the singular value decomposition of this big matrix. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna plot the first three kind of eigen genetic sequences. So we have this X equals U sigma V transpose. U is a matrix that has the information that's the same size as people. Uh, like this is a 216 by 216 matrix. V would be a 4,000 by 4,000 matrix. And so if I plot the first three values of this V matrix, those are my eigen genomes, my eigengenetic sequences. They're linear combinations of these genetic sequences, but I'm only gonna plot the first three dominant ones, and we're gonna see if any patterns or clustering emerges. And moreover, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot those points. So each of these 216 people will have V coordinates, these uh, eigengenetic sequences. They have their own unique kind of genetic fingerprint in this coordinate system. And I'm gonna take the people that have cancer and plot them uh, with red X's and the people that don't with blue circles. And of course I'm inverting the color so they won't be the same color, okay? And we're gonna see if any patterns emerge. So let's do that. Okay, so this is what we have here. Um, and again, I think um, the colors got a little bit mixed up so I should probably put a legend on here, uh, legend. Uh, the first one is cancer, and the second one is the normal group. Let's hope that works. Okay, I think um, it's going to be a little hard to, to get this to work exactly uh, on the first go, but maybe the point I want to make here is that um, the yellow and the blue dots separate in this three principal component space. Okay, so one group has, uh, has ovarian cancer, the other group does not. And just by taking this massive, massive data set and computing its singular value decomposition, instead of looking at 4,000 numbers for each person, I just have to look at these three numbers in the V1, V2, and V3 columns, these eigengenetic markers for each of those people. You can rotate this around and actually see kind of what this data looks like. There are, there's pretty good separation between these data sets. You could kind of draw a line, you could draw a line kind of between these, uh, these clusters and at least with some probability you'd be able to predict if someone does have cancer or does not have cancer based on where they fall on that line. So this principal component analysis or the SVD is really, really nice for visualizing very high dimensional data like genetic data where you can't plot in 4,000 dimensions, but you can extract the first three kind of principal components or singular vectors, eigengenetic sequences, and you can plot in that space uh, where things might actually cluster and separate. So very, very useful. Um, and you can also plot the singular values. So again, I always recommend that you plot the singular values on a log scale and then the cumulative singular values to see how much energy is in each of these, uh, each of these principal components. And here you can see this is exactly what I want to see in my data. There are a couple of massive 
singular values, and then everything else is really, really small. And what that tells me is that most of the variance in my data set can be captured by just a few of these principal components or singular vectors, and I can kind of ignore a lot of the other ones and still do a pretty good job of approximating my data. You can see here the first principal component, this is the cumulative sum, captures 55% of the variance of this data. So really a lot of information just in that first uh, eigen sequence. Okay, so the SVD can be used to compute the principal component analysis, which can give you some information about the distribution, kind of the statistics uh, of how data is distri distributed, what are the principal directions of variance and the directions that have the least variance and the most variance, uh, and you can apply it to visualize and understand very, very high dimensional data. Okay, thank you.